Hi guys, Righteous Raymond here, bringing you all a word of the day. And it is a phrase God gave me last week. The phrase is three sentences. God has a plan. The plan is going to work. Work the plan. God has a plan. The plan is going to work. Work the plan. So he brought um, to my attention Jonah's side. I played on my audio Bible, Jonah, chapters one through four. And he was showing me that this is kind of how you know, me and others can be, you know, people who are called of God. Um, God called us to do something, to do a plan that he already had in motion, probably from the beginning of time. And he just wants us to participate in his plan. So as we all know, was those who grew up in church know Jonah was a prophet. He was called to go preach to this really wicked city called Nineveh. Very, Google them, very wicked city, <laughs> you know, ancient, very old, old wicked ancient city. And Jonah didn't like the plan, and that's how some of us are really like, I don't know about that plan. I don't know if it's going to work for me. I don't know if I agree with that. I don't like how you moving. And so we reject the plan. We reject God's plan. And so some of us, you know how you hear churches say, you're running from the call of God in your life. You're running from the call of God in your life. You're running. Um, and so we run from God's call in our life. So he, he jumps on this. I think he jumps on a ship to Tarshish, if I'm not mistaken. So God calls him. He, um, he, he goes into Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. We hop, he leaves a city called Joppa, hops on a, on a, on a ship, going to Tarshish. And you all, that's what we do sometimes. We say, God want me to go this way. I'm going to go the exact opposite direction. I'm going to go a totally different direction. And we think, maybe God will get over it. He'll realize, I ain't participating with your plan. Go find somebody else to do. Like the lady said, get somebody else to do it. So the thing about it was that God did not forget about the plan especially the plan and he especially also did not forget that Jonah's gonna be in the plan so for some of you all God is going to work his plan and he's going to make you participate <laughs> so God has a way of manipulating circumstances situations around to make you participate in his plan it's like it's like God can control everything he can control weather he can control um wars he can control people he can control the economy and so he'll manipulate factors that make you participate in the plan. So when Jonah got on the ship, it was a terrible, you know, storm in the sea, a sea storm. And, you know, these other people, they were like, you know, they weren't, they weren't Jewish people. They weren't, they didn't believe in God. They were just, you know, whatever. They didn't, they didn't believe the most high God. So they were worshiping and sacrificing their gods. And like, we need to figure out whose God is mad because we need some help. Who's in trouble? They found it was Jonah. And Jonah knew, he knew that these people were suffering because of him. And how many people in your life are suffering because you won't obey? How many people are in your life trying to harbor a fugitive, not even knowing they're har harboring you? Some of y'all are dating people that you know you cannot date because they're not Christians. Some of y'all are dating people that you know you cannot date because God's like, uh, you got to date a Christian. I'm sorry, you got to date a Christian. I'm sorry, because you finna be a prophetess, you finna be a pastor, you finna be a bishop, you finna be an elder, a minister, an evangelist. And you can't date some people. You can't be around certain people without them suffering. So even when they, they, they cast lots, you know how we like pick straws or, you know, flip a coin. So they cast lots to see who the one who was in trouble. And it, the lot fell on Jonah. And I was like, what's going on, Jonah? And he knew, he said, well, you just have to throw me over the, overboard because that's the only way God going to stop this storm and throw me overboard. So it was like, they try to save me. They try, no, nah, we're going to try to save you. So what they do, they start throwing stuff. They start throwing their things overseas trying to save him. So Verses Jonah one thirteen. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to get back to dry land. They tried to save him, okay? They tried to save him. And they also ended up having to throw a whole bunch of their stuff in the sea. Um, and This is verse 5. And they hurled the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. So they were trying to light. They were losing valuable resources trying to harbor a fugitive. You know, they were trying to roll with all their strength trying to harbor a fugitive. Some people in your life, you all love you, crazy about you. They can't be with you because you're a fugitive. God has you under his control and you have to follow God's plan for your life. So anyways, Jonah, he said, go throw me overboard because I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go to I'm not going to go to, not gonna go to none of us. Go ahead, throw me overboard. That's the only way you can take the ship. So they throw him overboard. And then he gets, and then God appoints, he said, God appointed a great fish. God appointed a great fish. You know, God appointed a whale to swallow Jonah. Jonah was in there for three days. Some of y'all are so stubborn. You're in crazy circumstances right now. Conditions you should never have been in ever. 
unimaginable circumstances because you won't just surrender. You won't just yield to God's will and plan for your life. So you're like, you're in the middle of a fit. Some of y'all are like, what am I doing in this trap house? What am I doing in jail? What am I doing in this mental hospital? What am I doing in this crazy relationship with this crazy person? What am I doing with this married man and I'm and I'm not his wife? Some of y'all are in some crazy situations because you would not just surrender and say, you know what, God? Okay, I'll do it. So after three days, you know, he realized, okay, I'm going to go ahead and obey God. God sends him the same instructions, the same time that that was so funny to me. So Jonah 1, 1, well, Jonah 1, 2. Well, Jonah 1 and 2. Jonah 1, 1 and 2. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. So after he gets out of the fish, go two chapters later, Jonah 3, 1 through 2. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So you all, God's not changing his mind. God's not changing the plan because God has a plan. The plan is going to work, work the plan. So Jonah goes ahead and obeys this time. And y'all, what happened is the people repented. The people actually repented. How many people repented? There were 120,000 people that were waiting on a message from Jonah so that they can repent and not have their city be destroyed. All he had to do, y'all, was deliver a message. He delivered a message, and the people that actually told him to see what, what the message he told them. This is what Jonah said. This is um, Jonah 3, 4. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he caught out. And I'm sure he probably had a little attitude, more than likely, like, <sighs> yet 40 days, and then the bus shall be overthrown. That's all he had to say. He only had to follow a simple plan. Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Of course, depending on what translation um, you're using. Eight sentences led to 120,000 people repenting. Eight sentences, and I'm sorry, not eight sentences. Eight words, one sentence led 120,000 people to repent. You're so hard-headed. You'd rather suffer in a, in a sea storm. You'd rather make people lose their precious cargo, make people almost die in a shipwreck, go into a bit of a fish three days, than for you to simply go do your assignment. Seriously, it was eight sentences. Yet 40 days, and then the bus shall be overthrown. Basically saying, you know, if you all don't repent in 40, within 40 days, which is a month and 10 days, a month, a week and a half, you'll be overthrown. More than likely by their enemies. God was probably going to give them to their enemies. And it said, verse 5, And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. Everyone from the king down, they said even the, I mean, they said even the animals, um, even the beasts, even the animals, flocks, all of them, the king, the nobles, everybody, everyone repented because Jonah went and said eight sentences. He suffered unnecessarily. He suffered unnecessarily for three days. You know, his skin power was messed up. Skin power was was messed up. And all that digestive acids. What's, what's the hydrochloric acid in your stomach? It mean, messes his eyes up, messes his hair up. All he had to do is so you all, that's what God is asking us to do. It's like, my children, you know, the harvest is plenty. As Jesus said, the harvest is plenty. It's plenty of people need to be saved. Plenty of people need to hear the gospel. Plenty of people need to know who Jesus Christ is. The harvest is plenty. It's the laborers that are few. There's plenty of people needing to be harvested. The laborers are few. He's saying, I have a plan. The plan is going to work. Work the plan. You don't have to do a lot of thinking and opinions. I don't like that. I don't like that guy. I don't do it all that. It don't matter what you think. God is not, he's not picking you for you to think. He's wanting you to go and say a message. Just simple as that. Say a message. It's that easy. God has a plan. The plan is going to work. Work the plan. Thank you for watching. Please share, subscribe to Righteous Rama. Bye.